Welcome to Somerset Presbyterian Church on Christmas Eve. I'm Lynetta Putnell, and I'll be helping us through this today. If you haven't already done so, please take a moment to silent your phones, your watches, and any other electronic devices that you may have. Check out uh, at the bulletin or our SPC website for any additional announcements. Let's worship our God. Jane, thank you for that beautiful rendition of O Come, O Come. That arrangement was made by Tom's sister, Mary Hughes, so we really are thankful to get to share that celebration of worship today. Will you join me in prayer? God of love, choirs of angels sang to your glory on the night of Jesus' birth. Open our mouths to sing your praise, that we might join the heavenly chorus. As the shepherds left their sheep in the fields, may we leave our cares behind, that we too may find the hope of salvation in the Christ child. On this most holy of nights, may our worship benefit the Prince of Peace, who came to show us the depths of your love. Amen. As you are able, please stand and join me in our call of worship. Sing to the Lord a new song. Dance before the Lord, all the earth. Declare God's glory among the nations. Proclaim God's salvation to the peoples. For great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised. Come, let us worship God. the lighting of the candle. This is the time which God hath made special for us. This is a time of great joy, for we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Let us be happy. Let us be glad for our salvation has come from the God who loves us. Alleluia. The scripture is taken from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. 
Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. We light the candle that symbolizes the true light of the world. May this light burn brightly in the coming year in our homes. May we never forget the special meaning of Christmas throughout the coming year. Thanks be to God for this special time and the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You may be seated. Join us as we sing hymn number nine, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verse one. time and the wonderful gift that we have received from you. This is a very happy time for us and we pray that in the coming weeks we may not forget the joy of the angels, the excitement of the shepherds, or the peace that Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior brings. Amen. Those who are able please rise and sing. Hymn number 22, Angels from the Realms of Glory, verses 1 through 3. is so large that you can't fit on one pew, please feel free to break that tape so you can sit with your family on this sacred time. Thank you. 
The grace of God overflows for us through Christ Jesus, who came into the world to save sinners. Please join me in our unison prayer of confession. Source of joy, you are the author of everlasting life. Touch us with the wonder of that holy night when your son came into the world. For we yearn to leave the shadows behind, to walk in darkness and sin no more. We long to behold your light shining in our lives. As it shone in the stars above on the night love came down at Christmas. Guide our steps to the manger and make us instruments of your justice and peace. That the gift of your salvation may reside in every corner of the globe. We ask this in the name of our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. Please join me in a silent moment of reflection. Like the people of old, we who walked in darkness have seen a great light. We who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on us light has shined. Live in this light and you will live indeed. In Christ, we are forgiven. As you are able, please stand and join me in singing praises to the God, to our God for the gift of grace. Gloria Patri, hymn number 579. King. Let us share signs of peace with a parade wave as we celebrate the birth of the Prince of Peace. Peace be with you.
you want to hang this somewhere for me, Fleetwood? This clips on so you can find a place to clip it and then I will attach this and we will get ready for our celebration. You want to clip it on the bag maybe? Okay, you can have to. <laughs> Choice is yours. I know you're a smart guy, you'll figure it out. I, I do not trust it in my camera. You don't trust that, okay. <laughs> So that's what we're doing. Well, you can have that, that, that um, cupcake. cupcake if your mom and dad let you, but not right now. We'll, we'll let you take that back <laughs> later, okay? So why don't you put that down for now, all right? Uh, so I don't want you getting that nice sweater all, all dirty. But so God gave us a gift, and that gift was Jesus, okay? So it's like getting a present. God said, I'm gonna give you that gift and in the, the scripture reading to remind us is John 3.16. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And that, I'm going to give that to you to take home. And to remind you, I got a little heart here, because a heart symbolizes love, right? So God showed his love to us by giving Jesus to us. You could. Um, and I also have, if you like, you can glue it onto the back of this one, the bigger part, okay? So God gave us baby Jesus. Do you see the baby up there, right? And then baby Jesus is going to grow into be big Jesus, right? Like one, like your mom and your dad, okay? And then God, God sent his son to show us how to love God and how to love other people, all right? And so God wanted us to have all of these things so that we can know how to love God and other people. What do you say we pr you pray with me? All right. Dear Jesus, happy birthday. We give you thanks for loving us and showing us how to love you and one another and the world you created. As we celebrate, we ask that you help us to remember the most important reason for your son's birth. That you, O oh God, chose to love us. You chose to be with us and one of us, to show us the way of love. Amen. <clears throat> and now I've got one for your sister as well. So I didn't forget her. So Dad, if you want to grab one of those for Aspen. Thank you. Happy birthday, Jesus. <laughs> 
She's not sure whether she might appreciate the gift or not. Maybe after she eats it, she might eat a little more. She has had She's tried them before? At school. At school. I got the small ones because we wanted to make sure you're going to have plenty of treats and we wanted to make sure you, you go to sleep tonight. <laughs> we can go back to your seat now, honey. Pray with me. Dear Lord, a child is born to us, a son given to all the world. And as we hear the familiar story this night, may we listen anew for signs of God's glory and grace. Amen. Our first reading comes from the Old Testament from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned, and you have enlarged the nation and increased their joy, and they rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end, and he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The word of the Lord.
Our second gospel reading, or second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Now, this was the first census that took place while Quinarius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. And so Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior will be born to you, and he is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. And when the angels left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. And so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which they were just as they had been told. The Gospel of the Lord. The long-awaited event is finally here. Centuries of prophecies fulfilled. A baby is born, but not just any baby. The long-awaited Messiah. The one who will bring peace and wholeness to a broken world a populace separated by their creator by sin. A star appears in the night sky signaling the long-awaited event throughout the cosmos. This star will eventually be known as the Christmas star, also called the Star of Bethlehem. And it will be the iconic symbol of Christmas, and rightly so, because it marks the beginning of Emmanuel's earthly appearance, God with us. It signals humanity's hope for reconciliation with God and one another and a new life in Christ. It signals the depth and breadth of God's love for us. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son, so whoever believes in him will have eternal life. Now according to the biblical narrative in Matthew's Gospel, the star appeared in the sky on the night of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And John's Gospel, which we read just before, begins his story from a cosmic perspective. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Yet the Word chose to come from this lofty position in heaven to be with us. To be born as a human being, but not in the palace of a king or a wealthy merchant, but a humble birth in a stable to a devout Jewish family. God's one and only begotten Son chose to experience all the difficulties we humans encounter and yet still shown God's light and love so we can have a model and also experience God's love too. His coming gave hope to the world that was weary from all the things sin brings like greed and selfishness and hate. This Christmas Eve I would like to share two stories that exemplify Christmas for me. They are stories of hope, new life, love, and reconciliation. Both stories come from the book Guidepost, The Joy of Christmas 2011, 
And our first story is entitled Hopes Blaze by Julie Perkins of Steelville, Missouri. Now I'm going to read you the story. Some people collect figurines, and I love nativity sets. And when I was small, I would sit on the floor by the, by the, on the, floor by the creche and arrange the pieces, peoples and animals, to be sure each one had an unobstructed view of the baby Jesus. After all, he was the reason that they were gathered at the manger in the first place. And some had traveled miles to see him, God's promised fulfilled. And eventually my collection grew so large I had a set in every room of my house. And my favorite was a small ceramic set made by my mother-in-law. Each piece glazed a gleaming white. Now several years ago in February, my family and I returned home from church to find our house in flames. There was no saving it. We lost everything and had to move into our camper. And one morning I picked my way across the burned timbers and broken floors that had been our home. Lord, let me find one thing I can salvage from this rubble. What that might be, I couldn't fathom. A large decorative tin stood out in the debris, and I recognized it immediately. I had wrapped some of my nativity set in newspaper and stored them inside. And the tin was, was burned bare of color, and I pried off the lid. Oh my Lord, the newspaper wrappings had burned completely. Pieces lay jumbled inside, and they, but they were undamaged, but devoid of color. Every piece was a dull, ship primer gray. It was like the life had been sucked out of them. Looking at them, I felt the same way. I was about to close the tin when I spotted a sliver of color at the bottom. It was my mother-in-law set, now glazed a variety of colors from the shining gray to iron red. The colors from the others must have bled into the white, I thought. I set the pieces from that set on the table of our camper. Of all the things I could have found, this is what I needed the most. The Lord's promise, his promise of new life. Now we rebuilt our house and I collected new nativity sets. And at Christmas, when I arranged them, I take care with my old favorite the one that survived the flames. For me, it carries the Christmas message. The new life born in a stable 2,000 years ago is alive and well for us today. The promise that Christmas brings is indestructible. It is my strength all year round. Now friends, if you've lived long enough, you've probably had a moment like our author, where you have felt like your life was lying in a heap of rubble. A time when you were weir so weary you felt like all the life had been sucked out of you too. And it is in these moments that we need the hope Jesus offers, the promise of new life and salvation that the kingdom of God brings. And when we contemplate our scripture reading of God's promise fulfilled in that tiny baby, we can feel the awe and the wonder of that first Christmas night wrapped up in the promise that Jesus still offers us today. A line from the hymn, O Holy Night, best captures what Jesus' advent or arrival into this world means to us. A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices when yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. And even to this day, that song brings a quickening to my soul. God came to help us, to show us the way to a new life, a better life, one where we are reconciled to God and one another, if only we believe and walk in God's ways. Now, our second story is about reconciliation that our new life can bring, if only we let love God and each other and step forward in faith. In this story, our author enlist the support of her sisters and brothers in Christ to pray for her concerns and then left it in God's hands. The story is entitled Strength in Numbers by Carol Ann McGiffin of Mount Airy, Maryland. And the story goes as follows. During her teen years, my daughter Sandy moved in with her father, whom I divorced when she was little. Though I was hurt, I tried to remain upbeat. 
She didn't reach out to me, so I made calls and wrote all the letters. I was afraid that if I stopped, I would lose her. After graduation from high school, I knew I had to let go. And by Christmas of 1991, we had not spoken for six months. And our relationship seemed hopeless. I recently joined a new church. And one Sunday, I got up the courage to ask four women I respected to pray for Sandy and me every day for six months. And they agreed to help. And as the months passed, the support of these women filled me with a peace I had never known before. Each morning, I suspended my worries as I prayed. Lord, help Sandy find the love that is waiting for her. On Christmas Eve of 1992, almost a year after my friends and I began praying, a card arrived. The note inside read, I'm willing to try if you are. And I was more than willing. Prayers aren't always answered overnight, but I know prayers are answered. Yes, friends, prayers are answered. And sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is no. And sometimes the answer is wait or maybe. You see, God doesn't force anyone to do anything against their will. But God can help people grow to a better understanding of the situation and the relationship, which then in turn helps us change our hearts and our attitudes. And then a maybe turns into a yes or a no. In this case, it was a yes. The question we need to ask ourselves this Christmas Eve is, how open is our own hearts? Do we let God's promise of new life, life be our guiding light all year long, like Julie Perkins, whose house burned down? Or do we let pity and bitterness rot us from within? Her salvage manger piece was a reminder of God's promise and the dark of promise and the hope in her heart. Jesus was her priority, and he helped her through the dark times in her life. There was a poem in Guidepost, Joy of Christmas 2011, that helps us reflect where our priorities are. And it was written by Louise Tucker Jones, and is entitled, Is There Room? No room, no room, the innkeeper cried, only a stable for the Holy Christ child. I pondered this thought as Christmas draws, ne draws near. Is there room in my heart for this Savior so dear? I sent bulging box boxes to people in need bake cookies for shut-ins, and do other good deeds. I sing Christmas carols as I decorate the tree and wrap presents for friends and family. But deep in my heart, where no one can see, I hear just Jesus whisper, is there room for me? The poem begs the question, where are our priorities? And sometimes we let the good outweigh the better. And so sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what is better for us? And I pray this Christmas Eve, our priority is Jesus, for he is our hope for love, reconciliation, and new life. And when we reflect on our second story, it begs the question, are we able to turn to God and other believers when the prospect of reconciliation of our significant personal relationships seem hopeless? Will we trust God and others with our vulnerabilities? Carol Ann McGiffin learned that she could trust God and others and she saw firsthand what the power of prayer could do on that Christmas Eve in 1992. Our reading from John chapter 1 verses 4 through 5 tells us, And Jesus was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. In both stories, these women let the light of the world, Jesus, shine a path through the dark places in their lives, and the darkness did not overcome them. Julie Perkins prayed for something to salvage from the rubble of her home, and what she found was a beacon to stand for how God takes care of the rubble of her life and salvages it to make it into something new. Carol Ann McGriff Griffin let Jesus shine a light that led her to some women in her church who prayed for her and her daughter, which led to the mending of a broken relationship and a new beginning. May we all begin anew this holiday season and coming year. May we open our hearts and make room for Jesus. And may we let Jesus shine the light in the dark places of our lives and lead the way with hope in our hearts, trusting in God to love us 
and bring us to a place of wholeness. May we be able to find a safe place to be vulnerable and find the true reconciliation and see firsthand the power of prayer. So there was a poem on the inside cover of Guidepost Joy of Christmas 2011 booklet, and I'm bringing all these things together tonight for you. And it was a beautiful metaphor of the light Jesus shines for us, which began that first Christmas night. The poem is my prayer for you this Christmas Eve, and it was written by Mary Garin, and it is entitled, The Christmas Star. May the light that shone from the Christmas star on that night so long ago fall on you this Christmas night and set your face aglow. May it shine from your eyes, may it rest in your mind, may it burn in your spirit bright. May the peace it spoke to a weary world bring joy to your heart tonight. Merry Christmas, my friends. Amen. Let us now stand and sing hymn number 53, What Child Is This? commitment to share these gifts with one Jesus came to serve and to save. The calendar year will be coming to a close soon, and if you are able to complete your pledge, please send in your contribution before December 31st. So there are four ways that you are able to send in your offering. You can send it through regular mail. You can drop it off at the church office, make a donation through PayPal on our church website, or you can place it in the offering plate as it is passed around today. We will now be collecting our tithes and offerings.
Wonderful, thank you. All who are able, please stand and join me in the doxology. the first part is, begins with the words, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. And though for those of you who are at home, if you haven't already done so, it's best to gather the communion elements now, which would be bread or crackers or juice or water. And for those of you partaking in church, I will let you know when to open the wafer and the juice cup. Please know when we all be partaking together. Therefore, I will cue you when to take the bread and when to take the cup. And when I say bread, I mean the wafer. And I, I encourage you, there's like a little lip here, and just to kind of work it a little gently so that you can get it ready for later, because it really, sometimes it's a little tricky. And you might want to even pull back this little tiny um, clear part where the um, wafer section is, so that'll be easier for when you're ready to pull the wafer. I wouldn't pull the foil for the juice too much, because you don't want to worry about the juice spilling, but it wouldn't hurt to get it started. So this way it will make it a lot easier when the time comes for you to open it. So, having said all of that, friends, this is the joyous feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and from south to sit at table in the kingdom of God. Now, according to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread and blessed it. 
and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all those who trust in him to share the feast which he has prepared for us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayers. It is right to give our thanks and our greatest joy to give thanks and praise to you who created light out of darkness and brought forth light from the earth. You formed us in your image and called us to love and serve you. And when we were unfaithful and turned from your ways, you did not forsake us. Your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made your covenant to be our sovereign God and sent prophets to call us back to your way. In the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. In him, your word, dwelling with you from all eternity, became flesh and dwelt among us. Full of grace and truth, and we beheld your glory, Emmanuel. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the celestial choirs from heaven and with all the faithful from every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. And the people say, Holy, 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 Lord, God, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed are the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You sent your only begotten, in whom your fullness dwells, to be for us the way, the truth, and the life. Revealing your love, Jesus taught those who believe in him, received all who sought him, and lifted the burden of sin. We glorify you in your great power and love at work in Christ. By the baptism of this suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, <coughs> delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new people by water and the Spirit. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy <coughs> the redemption won for us in Christ Jesus. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that through our lives we proclaim the mystery of faith. And the people say, Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion and body and blood of Christ, and by your Spirit, unite us with the living Christians, all who are baptized in his name, that we may become one in ministry in every place. And this bread is bought Christ's body for us, sent out to be the body of Christ into the world. Let us pray. Help us, O God, to love as Christ loved, knowing our own weaknesses. May we stand with all who stumble, sharing in his suffering, May we remember all who suffer. We especially lift up today Alicia and Erin, Jennifer and Hillary, Jeffrey, Jerry, Richard, Sue, Brandon, Mildred, Susan, Wally, Alex, Van, Tajay, Cindy, Cleopatra, Pat, Agatha, Edmina, Jeanette, Mercedes, Mary Jane, Eric, George, the family of Fran, the family of Alice. Held in his love, may we embrace all whom the world denies. Rejoicing in his forgiveness, may we forgive all who sin against us. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when with the redeemed of all ages we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, eternal God, now and forever. And as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread and gave thanks, and he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, for the, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time that you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Friends, it is now time to open the wafer section of your communion cup. I'll give everybody a few seconds to get the wafer out. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. And now please open the juice section. Okay, everybody set? The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. O oh God, who has so greatly loved us, sought us, and mercifully redeemed us, give us grace that in everything we may yield ourselves, our wills, and our works, a continual thank offering to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now sing our communion hymn, the last verse.
favorite songs, and I sing it all year long. Sometimes my family isn't so thrilled as I'm singing, but my singing isn't the greatest, but it's because Christ puts joy in my heart. Christ's light is in my heart that I sing. And God says, make a joyful noise. So whether you sing wonderfully or do, no, do not sing wonderfully, we all have a light to share with one another. We all have love to share with one another. And the story that's in Silent Night tells the story of Christ's birth and of God's love. And tomorrow I will be sharing a little bit more about that story of how, that's, how that song came to be and how it touched the lives of others. So the, the um, reflection tomorrow will be different than the one that's today if you decide to come to worship. Tomorrow it won't be the same. We'll be doing lessons and carols. And so we'd love to have you here. But in the meantime, may Christ's light shine upon you today and always. May you take that light and bring it out into the world. And may all our lights glow and shine and make the world a brighter place. Amen. What a beautiful name it is, the 